In this lesson we will talk about effectors which will make a world of difference to your clone constellations. Before we proceed we have to create some sort of a setup and I think the best idea for us is uh, to create uh, pretty much the same setup just to fortify what we learned in the previous lesson. We will also create a arbitrary object so let's say uh, maybe this tube. I will scale it down roughly to, let's say maybe this size will be okay, and uh, I think the inner radius should be bigger, so let's uh, multiply that by maybe 3, so yes, that's good. And we will also apply a cloner to this guy, so it can generate a clone constellation. So, while this guy is selected, you can, as with any generator in Cina 4D, hold down the Alt key, it will become the parent of whatever is selected here in the object manager. So now let's switch to object mode because we want to use the spline, which is an object, to generate our clones. So we will load the circle spline here. And let's under this transform tab and uh, let me show you a, a little trick. So if you hold down your mouse button and drag over these guys, then you will activate all these tabs. Same goes if you hold down the control key, you will deselect them. Okay, so that's uh, sometimes really handy, especially for the ones with the tablet, such as myself. And uh, it can be really useful. So back to the transform tab, we will rotate these clones on this bank rotation. So we really don't need to use a rail spline. So type in here 90 degrees, so I really want them to be oriented like this. And uh, this setup will pretty much help me explain some things on the first effector we will create. Now, as I mentioned before, your cloner object must be selected if you want the effector which you will create to be automatically loaded here in the effector slot. So always make sure you have an effector here, otherwise it will simply do nothing in the scene unless it affects the cloner. Now let's load our first effector while the cloner is selected and the first effector we will explain is this plane effector. We will skip this group effector for later lessons. So select the plane effector and you will immediately see something happen in the viewport. Now I will just create a material here because uh, all the things in the viewport are gray and uh, I really want you to see what is happening with these clones and uh, you can apply material directly to any of these clones in the viewport and that will automatically set the material to a cloner. Now why do those guys jump into middle like that. So they basically shrink from the spline. And the answer lies here under parameter tab of the plane effector. Here under position Y we have a value of 100 centimeters. So this effector told all these clones to move 100 centimeters in Y. You can really check this out interactively. So for the ones of you that ask why those guys didn't go, let me just load the color that is more vivid, go in this direction, since this is Y, the answer is located in this transform mode and transform space. So let's get rid of this little guy and get back to our parameter tab of the plane effector. So this currently says that the transform mode will be relative to a node. And in this case, the node is this little guy here. So if I disable a cloner just for a moment, you'll actually see that Y is pointing in this direction. But once they are cloned on the spline, you'll actually see that that Y is pointing like this inwards. So y plus y minus in this direction. So I hope that makes sense. Of course, 
You can change the transform space to anything you like. So you can use the effector. And now those guys will go upwards 100 centimeters in Y. Because uh, the effector, since we are using its transform space, has its Y axis pointing upwards. Okay, I hope this is uh, clear enough. So basically you can use uh, even a absolute scale, which uh, is pretty much self-explanatory. Or you can use even a remap node. So basically you have a combination of uh, transform mode and the space that you'll, it will use for transforming the clones. So I really suggest using this uh, relative to node mode because it will give you most predictable results. So I'll set this to zero. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this X will bring my clones upwards like this. So let's put here 100 as a nice round number. Now let's add some life to this guy by enabling uh, this rate option. So these guys will begin to spin. So let's hit play here and set something like uh, maybe 10. That will be good enough. And uh, let's use even 20 clones. Maybe it will be a little bit more interesting. In the plane effector, you can now play with other parameters like scale. So for example, you can scale the clone on uh, one axis. You can scale them uniformly. I'll stop this just for a second because it uh, kind of slows things down while I'm recording. And uh, once this uniform scale is enabled, you can simply scale the clones to a value of one, which will mean double the size or even further. So one would mean 100% here. So that would effectively mean you can use minus one and completely hide those guys simply because uh, their size will be cut down by 100%. This is uh, understandable enough. There is also an absolute scale, which will help uh, prevent some scaling problems in certain constellations. But uh, maybe we'll talk about this later. Let me disable this scale for now. Rotation. Rotation means that uh, you can affect also the clone's rotation. So you can pretty much do anything you like with them. So now, to just uh, clarify this transform mode and uh, transform space. So now let's say that uh, I'll use the effector space. So you can see it's rotating around the effector space. I hope this makes sense. And I really strongly suggest that you use this relative node mode for the starters until you have a really a decent grasp of MoGraph. Now, many of you would say, well, this is nothing really spectacular or something you couldn't do with the cloner itself. But uh, here is one of the reasons why the effectors are so powerful. So we'll take a look here under this fall off tab. And uh, this fall off is really designed to limit the effect of the effector in a certain space. So it's really some sort of a confining tool. It will confine the effect in a certain shape. So we have a bunch of shapes here ranging from various uh, primitives like uh, capsule or cone or uh, sphere to really interesting ones like linear and source. I will explain linear later. And uh, I just mentioned that this source can use a spline, can use a particle or it can use a polygon object as a shape of a falloff. So this falloff functionality is really important in effector. So let me load up a simple sphere and uh, you will notice we have a new gizmo in the viewport. And also that our clones assumed their initial position regardless of the setting here. So we told them that we want them to move 100 centimeters in X, 
but they're still at their initial positions. Why? The answer to that is really simple. Now the fall off is actually this gizmo here. So everything inside it will be affected and everything outside will not. So let's physically move it here and you will notice something uh, happening. Now this guy is moved according to this value because they are in the reach of the fall off. You can see you have a yellow and a red sphere representation in the viewport and uh, that is actually this fall off. There is a bunch of settings here which are related to that fall off and uh, the most important are the scale. So you can scale this guy in uh, one, two or all axis. You can offset it, you can even create a slicing function. So it really helps a lot. And uh, this fall off, as I was saying, is uh, could actually be considered as a smoothing value. So if the fall off is set to 100%, then transition from here to the edge of this fall off will be really smooth. So let's hit play and demonstrate it. Look how those clones really follow and are reaching the 100 centimeter value, which is set here, really smoothly. So if this would be at zero, then reaching that uh, value we set under parameter tab will be really abrupt like that. So, so here under all of function you can actually set something different than a spline because now you can map that behavior with a spline so let me show you that i will load a i'm not sure you can see that because it is cut off i will load here a spline preset so i will load a sine wave spline and if i hit play and increase this fall off these guys will now obey the movement of this spline here. So that is really cool. You have a bunch of options here. So the fall off can be linear, inverse, inverse squared, or even uh, in a step manner. So step means one by one, basically. So fall off uh, will really not do what it does in this uh, spline mode. Let me reset that spline. And uh, that is really great. One thing that I should mention, you have this uh, invert guy, which will basically invert the effect to everywhere outside this guy. So let's invert it. And uh, you will see that now all these guys outside are actually receiving this 100 centimeters value and uh, those are really not receiving it and uh, they're not receiving it gradually so let's increase this back to a hundred and uh, i believe now it is a good time for me to explain this sort mode which we skipped on our initial introduction of the cloner so let's actually get rid of this uh, plane effector and we will create a new one and uh, We'll create a few more objects, so let's say a pyramid and uh, I'll scale that guy also down to say 20% of original size and uh, let's go with one more. Let's create a maybe, let's go with the cube and I will scale that guy also. So now we have three objects under the cloner but only the first one is shown. So to effectively use this sort mode, you have to load the effector for it. So our cloner is selected and we will once again load a plane effector. And uh, let's set the exactly the same value so we don't complicate things unnecessarily. And uh, if you hit play, you can see that the cloner is still working as expected and the clones are revolving just as in previous setup so let's go back once the clones are in the sort mode the plane effectors 
modify clone value will actually pick which clone is displayed so if you progressively play with this guy you will see that it picks based on the percentage so it splits this to 100 percent so you can have a, like a zillion objects here but they will be all mapped to 100 percent so this modify clone picks which clone is actually active and visible now you can imagine that uh, if you create a fall off for this guy let's use the same one and uh, move this guy here you can imagine that uh, things can become quite interesting when uh, you use this modify clone and fall off so let's set this to 100 percent and uh, press play so you will see that this object is actually changing and uh, I'm really showing you the bits and pieces of how MoGraph works and uh, maybe this is a little bit boring but it's really important for you to understand this so if you play with this fall of guy you will get all cubes so you're basically creating a transition here so you'll see it uh, briefly becomes a pyramid also so this is absolutely great and uh, I couldn't have think of a most simplest way to explain this uh, modify clone and this is not the end of the line actually it is just the beginning so here is a visibility checkbox so if you check this press play you would probably expect something regarding clone visibility to happen and it will but uh, on this plane effector for this effect to be seen you have to put this maximum value as you can see you can pretty much uh, define the maximum and minimum points for all these parameters with the single sliders this guy has to be zero and uh, for the maximum effect you want this guy to be 100 so it is a little bit uh, illogical and uh, may at first glance be a little bit uh, non-intuitive but uh, once you understand MoGraph this will become really really clear and uh, apparent to you also it is worth noticing that uh, this rule doesn't apply to all other effectors in fact i believe it only applies to a plane effector so now you can see our clones are actually disappearing so you can create very interesting effects here under fall off if you change this nothing will happen because uh, you really cannot map the amount of visibility it is either visible or invisible okay and just to confirm something if we hit this invert guy all the other guys which are outside this volume that is defined by the shape of the fall off will be invisible so let's uh, uncheck that and uh, continue with explaining these parameters here i deliberately skipped this color mode because i will use two effectors for this uh, and uh, we'll explain this a little bit more in depth because there are so many misconceptions about uh, texturing MoGraph clones and I think this deserves a better clarification. Now I want to explain this weight transform because um, it's a little bit difficult to understand and if you have experience with weight painting then uh, this is uh, actually a weight option for the clone so you can give a clone its specific weight so first here under effector tab I will reset these guys because uh, things won't work as expected with this weight transform parameter if uh, those settings stay the same and I will uncheck this visibility and uh, completely set this back to 0% now you can see how MoGraph is big and uh, complex and intertwined system but uh, I'll really try and give my best to explain some of these settings here. So weight transform. If you want to see the 
specific amount of weighting for the clone you have to enable that under cloner so here under transform tab under display i will choose weight and uh, you will get this little dot inside each and every clone now to give a weighting value to a clone you have to turn off every single parameter here so position scale and rotation has to be turned off also this weight transform has to be set to 100 percent now if i scale this uh, just a bit you will see that some of these guys becoming a bit more orangey they're really going towards yellow so this fall off will control how soft the transition is so i will scale the fall off down completely so you can see the effect uh, really abruptly now if i press play nothing will happen i just gave my clones a weight value and this yellow means uh, zero percent of weight and red means hundred percent of weight so to see this in action you can actually create another plane effector and uh, i will use completely the same values as we did for the first one and we'll now press play to see the effect now basically what i want to do is uh, i want this guy which is only weighting the clones it's only giving them weight values i want this guy to be used as a transform value for this plane effector i really know this sounds complicated so here under fall off if i turn this weight down that is for our effector that is uh, actually controlling the height if i tune this down you will see something happening so now if the weight is zero it will use the weight transform of uh, these guys so i really hope this makes sense so you can really morph things and create really interesting and uh, advanced effects you can mix the motion and uh, stuff like that so consider it as a weight painting for clones and uh, this kind of setups are used when you want one effector to affect many others so let's say you created a bunch of uh, other effectors created the desired look and gave uh, all the clones their weighting values and then you can trigger all that with a single effector i hope i haven't lost anyone so far so let's continue and there is one more thing i want to show you before we proceed to a lesson about coloring clones and uh, there is this time offset value so I'll actually get rid of this guy and uh, i will turn off the visibility of uh, weight so i will set this to none so it uh, really doesn't confuse us unnecessarily now let's get rid of uh, these excessive objects and uh, really want to keep it clean so you're able to understand more easily now this uh, parameter found here will actually work if you have uh, some sort of a keyframed animation and uh, you can currently see that uh, our plane effector is not moving these guys simply because this weight is set to zero so let's get back this 200 percent and ensure everything will happen correctly so i will disable the cloner and create a really simple animation so let's maybe go with the position y so i will keyframe this at the frame zero so i'm control clicking this little guy so it will keyframe only this parameter we'll go to frame 60 repeat this and on the frame 30 i will use uh, maybe let's say 100 which is uh, the value we are used to use so 100 and uh, we'll basically get up and down motion for our guy so that is working as expected and uh, one would expect 
that if you enable this cloner, that these guys will obey this uh, animation and they will, but only once you disable this fixed clone. So you can see the effect now. And uh, this is a really good opportunity to show you how this smooth rotation guy really solves this uh, jittering problem. So if you enable it, you'll really have smooth transitions. I will maybe set this to even, so we have even distribution of clones on this uh, spline. So back to our time offset, and it's really simple. Let's say that you created uh, a setup that you really like and uh, you're really happy with it. And if you want to offset it, so for example, if you want this to start uh, at the frame 30, you will enter 30 here. So that's really not technically correct, but I really don't want to trouble you with all those uh, technical details. So if you press play now, nothing will happen until frame 30. Of course, you can use any other value. So for example, if you set this to 107, nothing will happen at all since uh, our complete time is 90 frames. You can even go in negative directions, so things will happen earlier. So it will basically shift all keyframes for a given uh, object for this amount here. Hope this uh, makes sense and uh, that is uh, really understandable. Now we will talk in our next lesson about this color mode and uh, different ways how to color clones. Uh, what I want you to know is uh, to understand that uh, although MoGraph is really complex and it all works in conjunction, that uh, almost all effectors have a really similar parameter. So if you can understand this concept shown here in this lesson and especially in the next regarding coloring clones and giving them uh, various materials and color values, you'll be able to understand uh, the principle that lies in every single of these generator guys and this uh, effector. So this was really a basic fundamental premise of how MoGraph operates. Really take your time and explore the cloner and the uh, plane effector, which is pretty much the most simplest effector and uh, one that is uh, easiest to understand. Okay, so let's now go to our next lesson where we will cover some options of uh, how to color your clothes.